Okay, good evening, welcome to tonight's share. The halacha share this evening is entitled Stealing the Afikoman. Uh, it's a very interesting part of Sedanites, and just to explore a little bit about the background to this minhag, uh, there are different customs uh, across the Jewish world. Uh, in most families, I think um, the parents hide the Afikoman and then the kids are sent off and they try and find it. Uh, some, some families do the other way around, that uh, it's the kids who hide it and the parents. Uh, if they have the energy, they can go and uh, start looking for it. Um, and actually, there are some people who uh, object to this minhag, uh, which we'll see. But where does it come from? So the background probably is a Gemara in Pesachim. The Gemara in Pesachim, Daf Kuf Tes Omdal. If you're listening online, please email me at j.golka at uh, gmail.com and I'll send you the handout. So the Gemara says in Pesachim, Kuf Tes Omdal. Rebbe Liezer Oimer, Choyt Fin Matzois Belele Pesachim. Now, I'm not going to translate that, but chayt fin matzos can mean different things. Normally, it means to snatch, to take the matzos on the night of Pesach. Bishvil tinoikas shaleishanut, for the children, that they shouldn't sleep. That's the simple understanding of the Gemara. And then the Gemara continues and says, Tanya, Amru alav ar Akiva, they said about Rabbi Akiva, Miyomav le'omar higia eis la'amut v'beis ha'medrush. He never said, let's turn the lights off in the base medrash. Uh, we need to get up and go. Chutz me'avri p'sachim ve'erev yom ha'kippurim. Apart from twice a year, on erev Pesach, on erev yom kippur, ve'erev Pesach b'shvil tinoikos, in order to, uh, for, for the benefit of the children, k'deshe le'yishana, that they shouldn't uh, sleep, i.e. they should rest in the afternoon so that they can uh, be alert and awake in the night of uh, Seda. For Erev Yom HaKippurim, Kadesh Yachilis Benehem, and on Erev Yom Kippur, so that they can be around to feed their children, which is uh, interesting. Not that they should eat, but rather they should make sure that their children should eat on Erev Yom Kippur, which is the mitzvah of the ninth of Tishri. Now, the question is, what does Choyt Fin mean? So what I would like to present are four different Pshatim. Uh, mostly based on Rashi and the Rashbam, which is the, 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 com- the main commentary there in Pesachim. So the Rashi says, Chaitvin, Chaitvin Matzah, Magbi Enes HaKa'ara. It actually means that you raise the Seder plate, you lift it up, Bishvil Tinoika because that will sort of arouse the intrigue of the children. Why, Daddy, are you lifting up the Seder plate? What, what is that about? So chaitfin matzas means magbi in esha matzas. And the Rashbam in his first explanation says the same thing. The second uh, pshat of Rashi there in the Gemara Pesachim is the istam of Arsh, chaitfin matzah, which means oichlin maher. You eat it quickly. The zeh ikka, and I think that's a better pshat than the first one, midemaisi hod rebekiva bahado, because that really is what rebekiva is referring to. What does that mean? that if you eat quickly, that means the whole Seder night should be done in quite a sort of an expeditious way to keep the pace fast so that the kids could be engaged. And the point is that that's really what the, the continuation of the Gemara says, because the Gemara carries on and says, Rabbi Kiva says, that's a, you know, Shiloishanu, uh, and then Rabbi Kiva says, Bishvil HaTinoikas Kadei Shiloishanu. Now, the Shulchan Aruch explains, what does it mean eating quickly? Because that comes much later in the Seder. So, so what does that mean? So the Shulchan Aruch says, One should try and set the table before Yontav. Don't wait till you get home because, you know, we're trying to keep things going quickly. Especially this year here in, uh, in, in London. It's, uh, it's very late. It's, uh, it's an Ibayar and it's very late in April. And uh, the Zmanim are particularly late. Anyway, that one should eat straight away as soon as it gets dark. And even if he is in the Beis HaMedrash, he should leave the Beis, he should get up and go. Because there is a mitzvah to eat and to get on with it for the benefit of the children, they shouldn't sleep. But you can't do it early. You've got to wait at least uh, for Kiddush until it gets dark. Now, says the Mishnah Bura, what does it mean, to eat quickly? In other words, to do the whole Seder quite quickly. To don't, don't prolong things. I remember, you know, sometimes, you, uh, I remember as a kid, 
that with a certain seder we had with the you know that they, they they came back and he was you know one of the people was was being boidic the lettuce after shul when he came back before the seder starts. That's not the time to check the lettuce because that should all happen beforehand. But to Lazare, he says the Mishnah to get on with it, that the kids won't sleep, because if they know that they're not, there's not going to be a prolonged delay, and they'll ask, well, what, what's going on? And therefore, they'll see things are happening quite quickly, so that will encourage them to ask questions. So that's the second pshat in Chait Finis Hamatzas. The first pshat is to lift the Seder plate. The second pshat is to just eat quickly, to get, to get on with it. Now, the Rashbam gives a third pshat, a very interesting one, and that is the opposite. Don't eat too much. He says, Veli Nira, says the Rashbam in box number three, in the third, uh, par- two, two paragraph three, Veli Nira Chaitvin Masalkin Esalechem. You actually remove the food, Miyad Hatimakas, Shelo Yeshenim Mitech Michael Harbe, that they won't be a sort of, they won't slumber and be lethargic because they've eaten too much. Kader Chatimak Acha Chilosay, Veshuvle Yeshalem, because if a kid eats too much, he'll become very tired, and therefore, he, you know, he'll be lying on the settee, he won't be asking any questions. Again, referring to the continuation of the Gemara. Now, the Rambam gives a fourth pshat, which really is what we're referring to, is what we're familiar with, namely the snatching of the Afikoyman. Says the Rambam, One should do sort of different practices on this night, so that the kids will see, V'yishalu, and they'll ask, V'yoymru, Manishtana halay l'hazem mikol alilas, why is this night different? Ad sheyoshiv lohem, v'yoymru lohem, kach v'kach ira, v'kach v'kach hoya, and you'll start telling the story. V'keitz ad mishane, so how do you change the practice? How do you sort of liven things up by doing things differently? Number one, mishane, sorry, v'keitz ad mishane, mechalik lohem kloyes ve'egoizim. Number one is you distribute nuts and, and things like that. That, that sort of passed muster in days gone by. I think nowadays um, you would have to, there's sweets and, and other things to keep them, uh, to keep them alert. Uh, the second thing is you raise the milifnehem, you move the table away from them, before you start eating, which is of course a strange thing to do. In those days they would eat on a sort of a chaise lounge, a, a couch, and there'd be a, each one would have their own personal table, and you take that away before the meal, which doesn't make sense because you're about to eat. And then the third thing is, and this is the Lashon of the Rambam, which seems to be a little bit what our practice is. You grab the matzahs, one from the other, i.e. these sorts of engaging activities uh, to keep the kids alert. Now, um, the Maharam Chalava says, he actually uses the Lashen, not Chaitvin, but stealing. Uh, and he says, the Lashen, to do it in jest. So the kids will ask and they'll be engaged. Now, there, there are benefits, and this I saw, I heard in a shir from Rabbi Ari Leibowitz, he mentioned some benefits of doing this practice. The key, one benefit is, it's a very interesting uh, point, and that is, if you engage in this practice, and the kids steal the afikoma and you've got to get it back, it's a very good reminder to eat the afikoma. Because we've all been there, it's very, very easy to forget to eat the afikoma. Because you have the suda, it's very late at night, and... It's very, you know, after you have the dessert, you, you're going to go to bench. And sometimes we forget to eat the afikoman, and the Shulchan Aruch and Mishabur discuss what you actually do if you've benched, if you haven't benched, and various halachas. Do you have to wash again, etc., etc. But it's very easy to forget. And the reason, perhaps, also why it's easy to forget is that there's no brocha on the afikoman. And whenever you don't have a brocha on the afikoman, or on anything, then it's, uh, you know, the tendency is to forget. I'll give you an example. This is what Rolibowitz gave an example. That if uh, you're counting Sfirasa Omer, and then you miss a whole day, so that means you're out. Really, you should continue counting, but just without a bracha. So each day, you know, Shiva Yom Shem Shavu Echad La Omer. Just because you're out doesn't mean you can't count. But we don't, because if we haven't got a Pchiv to make a bracha, then often we sort of let it slips. Anyway, so... Um, so it's so uh, so that's one benefit. There is another sort of idea behind stealing the afikoman, and that goes back to the Vilna Gaon. That uh, the Vilna Gaon says that he reminds us that 
that uh, the night of Pesach is the night where, where Yaakov stole the brachas, as it were, quote unquote, and, uh, and Yitzchak gave the brachas. We're going to talk about that more in the next year. And, uh, and therefore, we sort of allude to that. Um, there are objections to the minhag. Um, and by the way, wh- wh- why is it the, wh- why is that uh, we're stealing the brachas and what's that got to do with Afikoman? So the point, of course, is that uh, Rashi says on, on Chumash, uh, when y- Rivka says to Yaakov, go and uh, give the matamim to your father and take shnei gedeizim, gedeizim, gedeizim are two goats, says Rashi, v'chish shnei gedeizim hoi macholosh of Yitzchak. That's what Yitzchak would eat, two massive goats, two, that's a lot of meat. One is for the Karim Pesach. Now, what was the Chachma? The, the Gemara says, the Rashi brings on Chumish, on, on, on Chumish that Bo Achicha Ba Mirma. Now, Mirma normally means with deceit, with cunning, but Rashi says, you know what Mirma means? Bo Achicha Ba Chachma. He says, Ba Mirma, he just adds a word, Ba Chachma. What's the Chachma? So, Yosef Chaim Zonnefeld says an amazing thing. When Yaakov got in there early, he presented the food to his father. This is the Karim Pesach. This is the Afikoman. And therefore, we know there is a rule, Ein maftir nacha Pesach Afikoman. You can't eat after the Afikoman. So therefore, he knew that even if Esau would come later and would present his father with his dish, he wouldn't be able to partake of it because you're not allowed to eat after the Afikoman. Yosef Chaim Zonnefeld notes that the word Bamirma, Bo Achicha Bamirma, has the gematria of 287, which is the same gematria as Afikoman. Astonishing. So you see that Bo Achicha Bamirma is referring to the Afikoman, and uh, that's what Yaakov Avinu is sort of, he stole the brachas and therefore stealing the Afikoman. That's perhaps how this, uh, one of the reasons why this minhag uh, came about. Now, there are those who object to the minhag, uh, largely because it's bad chinuch. You know, we don't, we don't encourage our kids to steal. Um, and, and moreover, the Gemara says in Bamatia Samachalov that when it says Lo Signov, Afilu, it says, you know, I'm it, even if it's just to, to sort of as a game or to chep another person, but not really intending to steal permanently. Or Lo Signov, I'm careful, you might come up with a very creative way to, to help a poor person. You know what? I'll steal a thousand pounds from him. And then I'll have to pay Kefeld and I'll have to pay him back two thousand pounds. Don't do that because that's a love of Lo Signov, even if you intend to pay back the Kefeld. But the reality is it's not really stealing. Yeah, it's more of a game. And, um, and the owner of the matzah is Michael. You know, Rabbi Libu is given analogy to basketball. If we're playing basketball, netball, this is what, yeah, then, then, you know, we would, you, know, you steal the ball from the other person. That's not theft. That, that's just how you play. Well, so too over here. Others say that this is, could be a zilzal mitzvah. Uh, you know, there's, there's certain ways that it's not appropriate to start running around and hiding it and chasing and snatching, and therefore it's a zilzal mitzvah. Um, and another concern is that, um, that it could end up in an inappropriate place to hide it. They've, I'm sure over the years there have been some very uh, creative hiding places, and, uh, and therefore, you know, in bathrooms and who knows where, it might be a bit uh, inappropriate. And, um, and, you know, for example, putting it under beds and you might forget it there and the kids are sleeping and you put some food under a bed. Again, like the source says in your day in, uh, in Kufta Zayin. Um, and many, many Gedolim, interestingly, were against this practice. Uh, the Chazan Ish, the Stipler, the House of Brisk are against it. Rabbi Shlomo Zalman, you know, didn't do it in his house. Um, however, many were in favor of it. The, you know, some Hasidic sources uh, refer to Kabbalistic ideas. Um, and it certainly works to keep the kids engaged. Um, sometimes it works too well that they're sort of away from the Seder table for a long time. But everyone has to know their own Seder table. If it means that the younger kids are busy hiding the Afikoman and they're engaged and you're dealing, you know, you can engage with the older kids, then sometimes that that's also has a benefit. But the, the long and short of it is, this is a, a certainly a very precious uh, custom in the Jewish world. Uh, whilst there are those who object to it, if this is a, you know, a good way of engaging uh, children, certainly younger children, then uh, there, are, there are many who do it. And again, what, what is the background? The background is this Mishnah, this Gemara, I mean, in Pesachim Kuftes, the Tchait Fin Matzas Beleli Pesachim, we saw different Pshatim, what it means, either to lift the Seder plate, to eat quickly, not to eat too much, or this last Pshat in the Rambam, that Tchait Fin Matzas Zemiyadzeh, or as the Maram Chalava says, that Goizlin, we actually steal it, that uh, presumably is, uh, is the key source to it, um, as, and this uh, very precious practice of stealing the Alfie Coleman.